Welcome to a Legendarium special about the five strangest ancient Egyptian gods and goddesses. Over their 3,000 year history, the ancient Egyptians worshipped hundreds, if not thousands, of gods. Five of the strangest are Mafdat, Babi, Amit, Sepa, and Anubis. Mafdat, one of the first goddesses worshipped by the ancient Egyptians, is often depicted as a cat. She offered protection from venomous animals and carried out justice and executions. Like many other Egyptian deities, artists portrayed her as anthropomorphic, a woman with the head of a cat. Other artists gave her a headdress of scorpion tails or snakes. Since she also served as the watcher of executions, some artists painted her as a cat running up an executioner's staff. Anyone unlucky enough to anger the pharaoh would have their head cut off in this world and the next by Mafdat's claw, as the Egyptian executioners called the tools of their trade. Of course, ancient Egyptians noticed that cats dropped dead vermin at the feet of their owners. Likewise, Egyptians believed that the obedient cat goddess Moftet dropped the hearts of evildoers at the feet of Pharaoh, hearts that she herself ripped out. Egyptians worshipped the cat goddess by bringing mummified cats to her temple. In the 1880s, archaeologists excavated her temple and uncovered more than 300,000 mummified cats within the complex. Bobby, known as the Bull of the Baboons, had two things going for him. First, he boasted a mighty phallus, which he used as the mast of the ferry which carried Egyptian souls into the next world, simply lashing a sail to it. Second, Bobby's favorite dish is a nice heap of steaming human entrails. If an Egyptian invested properly in the Book of the Dead and paid off the priests, Bobby would help them get to the underworld or the field of reeds. If not, you can probably guess what Bobby did. However, Bobby offered one additional perk to the dead. If one of the living impaired invoked his name, they would have a successful love life in the next world. Often portrayed as an alpha baboon, Bobby became known for his dangerously unbridled fertility, always looking to take a new wife. Amit, the devourer of the dead, is another god that no sensible Egyptian wanted to see in the afterlife. To be fair, Egyptians did not so much worship Amit as they feared him. Egyptians imagined this terrifying demon as being made from the biggest animals that could eat one of their countrymen alive. It boasted the head of a crocodile, the front body of a lion, and the back body of a hippopotamus. In Egyptian mythology, gaining entry to the field of reeds, or the next world, meant having important organs removed and put in canopic jars. This ensured that sorcerers could not use them for black magic. After someone died, the god Anubis weighed their heart against the feather of Mahat. If the heart proved heavier than the feather, the god judged it impure and Amit ate it. This doomed the Egyptian to wander the earth forever as a restless spirit. Sepa reigned supreme as the god of centipedes. Centipedes might seem a strange thing to be a god of, but the Egyptians were obsessed with preserving their dead and mummified corpses to keep them in good conditions. After all, if the body rotted, the soul would have nothing to return to. Unfortunately for the Egyptians, insects often infested the dead bodies before they could properly embalm them, which caused rapid decay. However, the Egyptians had a secret weapon, the centipede, which fed on other insects, but not human flesh. This led the Egyptians to believe that centipedes protected the dead. So it fell to Seba, god of centipedes, to protect the dead using his predatory myriapod invertebrates with a hundred legs, also called a centipede. Thus, Sepa earned reverence as a protector of the dead on earth, ensuring their bodies would remain intact and they would have a happy life in the next world. 
Finally, Anubis, the jackal-headed god of mummification, oversaw the embalming process and helped Egyptian souls find the Hall of Truth on their way to the afterlife. Because ancient Egyptians often saw jackals prowling grave sites, they came to link jackals with the god of the dead. Anubis first played a starring role in the first mummification when Isis had Osiris, her brother husband, embalmed. Anubis liked to collect trophies from the people he embalmed. When the evil desert god Set slayed his brother Osiris at the dawn of the universe, he offered the god's internal organs to Anubis as a present. And for centuries, Egyptians offered pieces of lifeless corpses to Anubis, one of the reasons he had a jackal's head. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.